This conference will now be recorded. Hi, my name is Tammy Stevens, and I'm one of the clinical assessment consultants for Riverside Insight. I hope each of you and your family are safe and secure in practicing social distancing in the confines of your homes during this COVID-19 pandemic. It's a scary time for everyone. Our country and our profession is experiencing unprecedented times, and we must find ways to alter and be flexible in our practices in order to continue to meet the needs of our students. Your Riverside Insights team is working hard to provide you with the resources, the flexibility, and the guidance needed to allow you to continue to serve your students in a way that keeps you and your students safe and healthy. Given the um, inability for us to conduct face-to-face -face assessments, we have come up with um, some guidance for you to conduct a remote administration of the WJ4, the Battery of 4, and the WMLS3. This brief webinar is going to pr provide you with some preliminary information around conducting a remote administration. We will have a more in-depth webinar available for you later in the future. So our agenda for this webinar is to provide you with Riverside Insights response letter to COVID-19. We also want to talk a little bit about what a remote delivery involves. I'm going to highlight that webinar training that I mentioned. It's going to be a little more in-depth than this. Um, it's going to be focused for uh, examiners and for testing facilitators. I'm also going to provide you some information around accessing the digital testing material. And then I'm going to give you some um, contact information for our other representatives, our other clinical um, assessment consultants around the country. In case you have more questions after this webinar or you want to obtain more information. So just as other publishers have come forth with, Riverside Insights has a response letter to the COVID-19 pandemic. We know that in these given times, um, it's not safe for you to conduct a face-to-face -face evaluation. So we have come up with some flexibility around the use of our assessments. We're well aware that using the WJ4, the WMLS3, and the Battery of 4 in a teleassessment format is highly unusual to some of you. But as I mentioned, we are in highly unusual times. Some of you listening are probably private practitioners and may already engage in teleassessment practices. The rest of you are probably school personnel, school evaluators, and this is something that's new to you, and I'm sure it's a little scary. So we're hoping to be able to give you some guidance on how you might be able to feel more confident and um, integrate teleassessment practices into, um, into your practice. Riverside Insights is highly committed to helping customers navigate through this time as a partner. And we're working on innovative ways to allow customers to continue to utilize our instruments as part of an assessment, even if it's administered using non-standardized means. As we work alongside our customers looking for ways to alleviate assessment stresses during these difficult times, we welcome your thoughts and your feedback. I highly recommend that you go to um, wjscore.com. Or the, w, uh, or the RiversideInsights.com website and download the full letter and read through it carefully. So what do we mean by a remote delivery of a digital assessment? What does it involve? Well, we know that typically our individually administered tests are administered in a face-to-face -face setting. However, Given the circumstances around COVID-19, face-to-face administration is not a suggested option at this time. Instead, examiners are interested in learning about ways in which such tests can be administered in a remote setting. I've had a lot of 
practitioners, a lot of evaluators reach out to me asking how we can continue to, um, how they can continue testing kids during these times. So when we're conducting a remote assessment, basically the examiner and the examinee are in different physical locations. There is a web conferencing platform that's uh, utilized in order to project the stimuli and also interact um, to allow for interaction between the examiner and the examinee. There are many different types of web conferencing platforms out there that can be used to conduct the evaluation. There's some of the um, examples here or presence learning platform. Um, I believe they're uh, contracting or with districts and personnel to allow the um, accessibility to their platform when conducting a remote um, assessment. There's also WebEx, there's Zoom, there's GoToMeeting, um, Google Hangouts. Um, so really you need to do your research around these and really look at when you're researching these web conferencing platforms, really look at their confidentiality and security of data um, statements. So the assessment occurs via remote administration of the test by following standardized administration procedures as closely as possible. Now we know that because we're not gonna be face-to-face, -face, there's gonna be some deviation from those um, standardized practices. So it's very important that, and very necessary that when you do deviate from these practices, that the examiner notes the deviation on the test record and also consider that deviation when interpreting the data. We know that at no time is it appropriate to make an educational decision for a student, whether you're testing them face-to-face -face or in a remote setting, based on a single test score. It's very important that the, the information that you receive from these tests are merged with other multiple sources of data when making educational decisions. Another um, thing that's highly recommended is for the examiner to conduct a pre-screening of the testing environment to ensure that it is an appropriate um, setup prior to conducting the formal evaluation. And we'll talk a little bit about that um, on the next slide, but we'll get into more detail as well in the more in-depth uh, webinar that we offer. It's also important that you, you realize that depending on the age and ability level of the examinee, a facilitator may be needed to provide minimal organizational assistance to the examinee and the examiner during the, t during the testing session. Now, those who engage in telehealth um, type of assessments already, there's typically someone, um, a professional, maybe a teacher, maybe a, a paraeducator that's trained and serves as a facilitator. But we know that given the circumstances of um, social distancing and uh, mandatory quarantining, that a lot of times the only person available to facilitate would be the parent a caregiver, or another family member. So most of the um, organizations out there that practice tele teleassessment have relaxed the requirement of having a professional serve as a facilitator, but there is some general guidance around um, training that facilitator. So if you do um, engage in the uh, tele-assessment and you're going to use a parent or a caregiver or a, or a um, another family member, it's very important that that facilitator is trained on what they can and cannot do during the session. And again, our more in-depth webinar will go into some of those considerations. Now, I know that a lot of people are concerned about um, not having a lot of, most of these tests do not have digital norms. I do want to bring your attention to some of the equivalency studies that are out there that have been conducted on using um, the WJ uh, for um, the cognitive and achievement test 
in a face-to-face -face versus a remote administration setting. There's an equivalency study, if you Google, by um, Dr. Jordan Wright that was conducted um, back in 16 or 18, of the, the journal articles, uh, 2018, um, where he used the presence learning platform. And basically, the results found there was no uh, significant, significant difference between students' performance in a face-to-face -face versus a remote administration. So I highly recommend that you pull down that, um, that study, read through it. There's also similar studies out there for other tests. Um, and there's other articles and research out there around uh, util utilization of uh, tele-assessment practices. So you might be asking yourself, should I utilize a remote administration? Well, when you're making that decision, examiners should think about the following. You really need to use your professional and clinical judgment when deciding whether to utilize a remote administration. So there may be incidences where it's appropriate and there may be incidences where it's not appropriate. So you really need to conduct um, a pre-screening for each case to determine if it would be appropriate. Um, have that pre-screening to assess the environment, the student's environment, assess the technology that, that is on hand, um, make sure that you're able to hear the student, they can hear you, um, you're able to see the student, and things like that. Also, consider on a case-by-case -case basis, use your professional and clinical judgment to determine if the examinee is a good candidate for a remote evaluation. So some of the things you may think about there is the age of the student or their functional level. Also, we highly recommend that you consult with respective uh, professional organizations for further guidance on using instruments in a tele-assessment format and really consider and follow your local, state, federal, and professional guidelines carefully. I also highly recommend that you not just jump into um, a remote administration, but you find a, a friend, a peer, that you practice with prior to conducting such assessment, because it is going to be a little different than what you're, you're used to. So I wanted to bring your attention to Riverside Insights privacy policy. Remember that we do have our privacy documents that can be retrieved from wjscore.com or also on our website. Um, Riverside Insights platforms are secure. Um, we make sure that we adhere to um, the requirements for FERPA and for HIPAA. The, e the legal and ethical requirements must be continued to be upheld regard regarding the test disclosure policies, um, the clinical privacy policy, and also the terms of use. So you would need to follow the same guidelines that you follow when you're using an actual physical test um, when conducting uh, the remote administration. However, as I mentioned earlier, even though Riverside has secure platforms, sometimes those web sharing platforms that you utilize during the administration may not. So again, you need to be aware of the risks that you're taking when using those various platforms and really do the research around those platforms before you ever um, engage. So this is the webinar and training for the evaluators and the testing facilitators. I'm um, actively working on, on this particular webinar. Um, it's going to be coming soon. I hope we can get something out to you uh, later uh, this upcoming week. Dates and times will be posted on the wjscore.com. So Let's say you decide that you want to engage in a remote administration of our test. Um, how do you access the testing materials? Well, everything has been uploaded on the resources under the resources tab of the wjscore.com platform. We've uploaded test manuals. Uh, the digital test book easels with the stimuli. So any test book that requires the student to um, see the stimuli 
has been uploaded to the uh, resources tab. It's very important due to copyright that we you do not make copies of any of these, share any of these um, these tests with anyone uh, without an educational need. Some of the tests also require that the student um, use a student response booklet. So one of the ways that we've suggested this is, this be handled is for schools to um, uh, seal the student response booklet and a, another envelope in a big like manila folder or a, um, a yellow envelope, seal it, sign your name maybe with a sharpie or something across the uh, seal, have the parents pick this up, um, have it during, have it delivered to them prior to or picked up prior to the testing session. And then during the testing session, have them open it on camera. The student would use it to answer their questions. And then that extra envelope would be used to seal that re response booklet, sign across the, um, across the uh, seal, and then that would be returned to the school for scoring. So there may be some other creative ways that, that you want to handle this, but this is one of the ways that I thought that would be most secure for our, our student response booklet. So um, the next few slides is just going to um, highlight the tests that are included on um, the online scoring platform. We did not include any of the tests that require uh, verbal only. You should have copies of those tests and be able to administer those um, through that um, tele-web conferencing. Um, but this shows you uh, which tests require stimuli, uh, which requires the student response booklet, which requires a verbal only, and then uh, those items that require the auditory. So it's just a little, re, uh, quick little resource uh, for you to look at. We did the same for the digital administration of the Batteria Cog and the Achievement, as well as the WMLS. This is a snapshot of what it looks like under the Resources tab. So again, you can go there and access the information. You basically click on the link; it'll pop up. It's got a uh, table of contents that you can link on. We did not include the name of the test, just because if the student sees um, the table of contents on their side of, um, of the computer, we just don't want to provide them any additional information around that. So we just have the test numbers, um, and you would just pull it up uh, and display it through the WJ Score um, website. If you're going to use the WMLS, that would also be under the Resources tab when you log in for the WMLS um, 3. This is the contact information for your clinical assessment consultant. So based on state, uh, these are the individuals who you, you would need to reach out to um, if you have more information about the um, the uh, ability to conduct the evaluations using these tests remotely. We do have, um, also we have some guidance around the BDI. So those of you who use the Battelle Developmental Inventory, it's not going to be displayed through the WJ uh, score, but we do have guidance on how you can utilize that during a, uh, through a remote um, evaluation, as well as we have plans to upload um, in the future the ECAD. So again, thank you for your time. Please stay safe. Be on the lookout for the more in-depth webinar offerings. And if you have further information or further uh, feedback or uh, questions, feel free to reach out to um, your clinical assessment consultant here for more information. Thank you and have a wonderful day.